How's everyone doing? Rocket League Decision Making is back with a special guest today. I have Peaceful Paul. Now, Paul was, was a plat in Season 4. With about 200 hours, he hasn't played too much in recent times, but he's getting back into the game. Most importantly, he is the co-host of the No Question About That Manchester United Football Club podcast and a lifelong supporter. Paul, I, I've been waiting to have you on this for the longest time. How are you today? I'm really good, thanks. I'm very excited to be here. And I should clarify that it's not quite true to say that I haven't played a lot recently because actually we've played a ton recently. Um, just uh, I have transitioned from taking Rocket League more seriously than I really want to to uh, just playing an awful lot of casual. He's about to ball me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump into some questions. Number one, talking about Rocket League, what's your biggest strength? Um, I think I'm a natural team player in in life in general, but in Rocket League, I, I think that I am someone who has the capacity to read where I'm supposed to be on the pitch, essentially. like I, th I would say that's probably my biggest strength. What I then do, uh, essentially, right, what I'm saying is I'm Jesse Lingard. My off-the-ball work is excellent. <laughs> on the ball, it's slightly more questionable. Okay. All right. Uh, Jesse scores when he wants to. Lately, he doesn't want to. Um, <laughs> flip side of that, what is your biggest weakness? Okay, so I have one, like, ridiculous leak, which is uh, being in goal, and there's no – there's just no – way i'm getting to the ball before the opponent oh wh why am i going for this ball why am i going oh they've scored like that that's my biggest kind of leak and then just technically i'm i've just never ever practiced rocket league i've played for fun but i've never practiced so there's all kinds of technical limitations in terms of just execution of basic stuff like you, like any situation you can imagine i can definitely miss the ball in that situation okay i'll i i hope i'm ready for it Here's a gimme. I think you just answered it. Do you ever warm up before you start playing? No, I mean, uh, I will sometimes, like right now as we're chatting, I am driving around the training pitch knocking the ball about. Um, but I'll And I'll do that when I'm on the phone to people and stuff. But beyond some very, very basic, like I, I learned to play Rocket League never, ever having ball cam on. And then uh -huh. I got to the point where I was like, I should be able to like at least hit the ball with ball cam on. Because if you if you have never in your life played Rocket League and you've played, say like that was halfway through the Rocket League I've played. So like I played two full human days of Rocket League without ever putting ball cam on. It makes it very difficult to hit the ball when you have it on for one reason or other. Um, so I can now like, that is that is one of the few things I actually did practice. But no, I don't really warm up. Not in a serious way. Okay. Now, I want you to think back to, I want to say three years ago. That might have been season four. What's one okay. thing that you wish you could tell yourself back then that you know now? Uh, <laughs> I have to say, I just thought about 30 answers. None of them have anything whatsoever to do with Rocket League. And they're all about like um, looking after myself better in a variety <laughs> of different ways that really have nothing to do with Rocket League. In Rocket League terms, uh, nothing really meaningful. Because um, okay. I I haven't consciously tried to develop my Rocket League skills really ever, to be honest, beyond like playing a lot. Okay. Now, here's going to be an interesting question for you. Because you took a little bit of time off and now you're back in the swing of things. Would you... I mean, I have to say, like you've mentioned a few times time off. I don't think I've ever taken what you would call time off Rocket League. Like, okay. Um, since the game came out, when it, when it came out, it was PS Plus, right? And um, me and my friends all got super into it. We played it every single night for ages and ages and ages and ages. And so what year was that? Was it 2016? 2016. Well, 2015. Yeah, so 2016. I think it came out late 2015, but 2016 is really when everything kind of went free to play. Yeah, it was, it was the first month. It was immediately as it came out on PlayStation. So if that was late 2015, then, then okay. that was then. And if it was early 2016, it was then. Um and we played every night for probably a year more or less like, i don't mean literally every night but you know yeah. often and uh in the subsequent four years we've had plenty of periods where that's been the case again we've kind of all kind of collectively got back into it it's been a sort of constant load star for those four years it's not like played loads had a couple of years off and now i'm playing again okay. absolutely not we, we'll have like 
I would say that in that period of time, the longest I'll have gone without a game of Rocket League at all would be like three or four months. Okay. Just long enough to watch uh, the World Cup and then take another month or two to yourself. Gotcha. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> well, then here's the question. What is one change you would make to Rocket League? I would get rid of the what I say quick chat. Okay. Uh, except no i no, i would somehow invent a device that meant that you could only use it sincerely when you wanted to compliment your uh opposition on an excellent save. okay or Good a teammate ball. i like it <laughs> now i want to talk a little bit of style with you how do you like to play do you want to be aggressive do you want to be defensive you mentioned that you like to be a team player midfielder maybe i find that this is mostly a function of the people that I play with more than anything else. It will depend on who I'm playing with. I have friends who I'm definitely going to be in goal most of the time. It will be good in the sense that there'll be someone trying to be responsible in goal. It'll be bad in the sense that sometimes they won't be able to do the thing they're trying to do. Um, so I would say that, but really I, I just, I'm, I would, all right, if we're going to go with a United theme, uh, I'd like to be a box box midfielder. Okay. Perhaps without the personality, I'll go with Roy King. God, I love Roy. I do. So much. He's like, I can't say that I love him so much for a variety of reasons, but he's one of the most extraordinary sports people of all time. That's without question. What did it for me, we're a little off topic, is the Roy Keane podcast that you were a part of. Yeah, amazing. I'll tell <laughs> Neil that. He'll be delighted. <laughs> it was just phenomenal. But continuing our football theme, there's teams such as PSG, FC Barcelona, AS Monaco, and others have all had their stake in esports. Would you like to see Man United join the ranks and maybe compete at a higher level? No, I hate it. I mean, I don't hate esports, but I hate branding. I hate branding with every fiber of my being. So I have no relationship with the brand Manchester United whatsoever. Like, to me, Manchester United is a railwayman's workers club that's grown and it should be a community oriented, community minded organization focused around football. And kind of if they did it in a super kind of inclusive and like developmental way for the sake of people's well-being, then sure, that'd be great. But as part of the kind of like hey, how can we future-proof our brand against the rise in esports? Then it's like, nah, I'm not interested. I, I would much rather follow an organic um, esports team that emerged out of an esports community than one that's badged with a thing I care about from another arena of my life. It's just not, like I said, the, the brand Manchester United doesn't mean anything to me, except it's a sort of dilution of the spirit of the thing that should really matter. That is a well thought out and honestly amazing answer. Uh, on, <laughs> the, on the no question about that, formerly the Rant Cast podcast, there's been a lot of talk about how the Manchester United women's team that has only been around for a few years now took way too long to kind of come about. So I was curious how you would go, and I think you answered that question uh, perfectly. I really do. Yeah, because it's important to know that the, there was a women's team. Like United always had a women's team. Uh, until the Glazer takeover and the Glazer takeover, uh, the Glazer family um, uh, killed off the women's team to save approximately, this is a, a staggeringly small amount of money in retrospect, but it felt like a lot of the time, um, to save a million pounds a year. Um, they they canned the women's team. So, yeah, that's, that is something that United have traditionally done. Two things to follow up for that, and then we'll get back to some questions. Number one, not to get political, but Glazer's out. Number two, uh, our women's team, the Manchester United women's team, they're pretty good. They're fun to yeah. watch. They really are. So if you are if you are a football fan, make sure to uh, give the ladies a shout as well. Now, next question, Paul. Manchester United are known for their winning ways, and I have to throw this in there, with a record. Uh are we top tier titles? <laughs> 20 okay. top tier titles. The last one was seven and a half years ago. <laughs> we'll be back there in no time. I hope. <laughs> Would you like to see an esports team follow that success, or do you hope for a more even playing field for the esports teams that are out there? Well, it's very interesting. That's a really fascinating question that I can honestly say I've never even started to think about. Um, 
one of the things that's sort of fascinating about the dichotomy between English sports and American sports, you mentioned like not getting political, but America is obviously a country where like socialism uh, until very, very recently and still in huge swathes of the country is genuinely like considered an active enemy of the country. Yes. And yet their sports are unbelievably socialist. Yeah. Their sports are like, oh, you haven't won for a while. Oh, let's make sure you've got some good players then. And oh, this is the limit on how much money you can all spend. And, you know, it's the, like, the most kind of culturally un-American thing you can possibly imagine. So it's sort of hilarious because I come from a country which sort of not, it's far from a, a left-wing country in European terms. It, in fact, very much the opposite. Um, but the sports have always been like, well, certainly since the advent of the Premier League in um, in the early 90s and even before that, to be honest, like rapaciously, voraciously capitalist. And I I think if you're going to if you're going to create an sports model around teams, it, it's a funny concept to me because um, you know how in football there's this like conversation at the moment about how some people are like, Messi fans or Ronaldo fans. Do you know what I mean? Like instead Ronnie of being, uh, yep. Yeah, well, that's definitely the wrong answer out of those two. But um, <laughs> um, but you know, like they'll follow a player rather than a team, which is like weird and antithetical if you're yes. sort of a vaguely Strange. old school football fan. Yeah. Um. But to me, like esports, it feels very, very natural to follow a player rather than a team. I, I suppose that's because I think of it. I think Rocket League, I guess, I suppose this is the case for MOBAs and things like that, which I've never really played or watched. Um, and they, I guess they're very team oriented as well. But like, I think of esports, like the, the most well-known esport in the UK is like FIFA. And there's no team dynamic to that, really, ironically, given it's playing a team game. But that's about individual players. So I've never really thought about the concept of esports franchises or teams as they relate to the existence of teams in existing sports. And I, I, I think that um, I think I'm sort of instinctively in favor of a kind of an, a fairly unregulated model um, in terms of like draft picks and things like that. You should be able to build a dynasty, I think. Okay. But then I also think it's just kind of ugly if you, I suppose it'd be pretty easy in esports to get into a position where you do what like Manchester city or PSG or, Chelsea in the mid 2000s have done and just buy your way to the top of the pyramid. Can you tell that I'd never thought about that before from no, that very no, long it, answer? It's a valid answer, and I'm really glad I asked it. Kind of to throw it back to the beginning part, the franchise system here in the States, where there's necessarily no punishment to do bad. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I live and die by the Cleveland Browns, who have been perennially terrible for 20 years in a row, which is why I have so much love for Manchester United. Please, please continue to win. Try to. Um, oh, oh, begin again to win. Begin again. Just, <laughs> I, yes. Um, don't, don't be the Browns for the rest of your life. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. Where this, this whole idea of relegation in the UK, to me, is the perfect fix for this. There should be negative consequences if you don't perform well. I just finished the um, Sunderland Till I Die Netflix series. I don't know if you guys have that in the UK or if it's just a Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. No, no, it's, it's And out. Um, I have no emotional ties to Sunderland, and watching them go down is heartbreaking and also awe-inspiring at the same time. Like, they just can't get it right. Um, but at the same time, because they can't get it right, they should be where they are. It's, it's absolutely fascinating to me that American sports exist without relegation and that relegation is, of course, such a kind of weird concept if you've never come across it. That like, oh, wait, a team can just disappear from the league, not because, I don't know, they've gone bust or whatever, or they were, you know, they couldn't make the franchise work, but because the team is no good. You know, it, it's fascinating. But then I also, I, I, you know, inherently I'm drawn to... Uh, equality and a level playing field and all those kinds of stuff. But it seems to me like the, it's not like American sports are a perfect model of every team wins about the same amount of times because the Patriots seem to have won an awful lot of Super Bowls yeah, for a sport it. that is supposed to balance the books kind of thing. I love it. Uh, I think that's a great answer. And I have this weird feeling that this whole interview is going to become its own, its own episode for something. <laughs> so next question, though, we've got two left. 
apart from having a global podcast, uh, you are a counselor and a psychotherapist. So for a Rocket yeah. League player that's struggling, what would your biggest advice be? Uh, so my very, very biggest advice for anyone doing anything that is in esports in particular, sports too, um, although honestly slightly less with actual physical sports uh, because of the physical benefit you get from doing that, which obviously you don't get from esports. I'm not saying there's no benefits from it, but then they're not the same kind of benefits. Um, make sure you have it in perspective in your life. Like being better or worse at Rocket League is absolutely not going to define you. Of course, if you're a completely elite Rocket League um, professional and this is going to be your career for a period of time, even then I would say make sure you're keeping this in balance with a healthy life outside of Rocket League because uh, never mind anything else, like it's the right thing to do anyway. It'll also make you better at the game. Less really is more when it comes to uh, learning skills. Obviously, you've got to put the, the hours in in terms of practice, but you also need time away for it, literally, for your brain to make the neural networks, for the muscle memory to be embedded into your system. Um, but also, so that's the, that's just if, just for the kind of getting better at Rocket League bit of it. But But it's also really important that you don't make it your identity because, um, I mean, this happens to people in traditional sports all the time. They reach the end of their career and they really struggle because who are they without the sport? And then we see huge instances of like, quite serious mental health problems among retired professionals. Rocket League or esports in general is an even shorter career that's also generally happening to people before they're fully an adult because yep. your brain doesn't really finish its development until you're 21 years old. So if you're under 21, which you basically have to be if you want to learn to be a Rocket League professional because of the twitch muscle fibers and the level of challenge and the level of dedication you're going to have to have, um, remember that even if it feels like the most important thing in the world, this is like, I'm 43 years old, right? And I could not sound more like an old man that you're not going to listen to right now. But believe me, there will come a time when you also sound like that old man to someone else who's young and probably goes, what the hell do you know, granddad? Um, it's, but it is absolutely true that this will not define you one way or another in your life. So, make sure you're you're kind of striving to keep it in perspective because that will also help with it's much better if you're a sports person and you're putting less pressure on yourself because you're more able to access your best capabilities and let's face it in any kind of sporting endeavor let's say you're roughly technically equal to your opponent how you execute your skills whether you're playing tennis or snooker or american football or football or rocket league um being in a kind of peaceful internal state will actually make you better able to exert your skills. So you might think you've got to be super amped up and full of adrenaline and that state can be useful in certain circumstances. But in general, if you want to be able to do something consistently well, doing it from a place of kind of being somewhat at ease while you're doing it is crucial and, and having it in a healthy perspective will help with that state of mind. And it will also generally just make you a better, happier, healthier person. Paul, you're amazing. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. This guy is extremely kind of you to say. <laughs> um, all right. So here we are. Very end. Uh, back to Rocket League. You can only choose one. Mechanics or positioning? Yeesh. Well, I mean, if I could magically improve one of them, as I said earlier, like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I, I kind of basically have. I've chosen positioning and it's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> like um ultimately i think that you can probably depends what level you're talking about right if you're talking about sort of moderate casual rocket league then positioning is just a, an absolute differentiator between the, the the kind of decent casual rocket league player but i would say at an elite level if you you're probably more able to make up for slight weaknesses in positioning with with strengths in mechanics than the other way around but i've never had strong mechanics so i i couldn't say for sure i've listened to this question i've asked this question probably 40 times now and everyone makes a compelling argument i never know which way to go i originally <laughs> started hardcore positioning and and now honestly every other week i'm flip-flopping i really am 
<laughs> Paul, well, you- yeah, cause this, but that's because, by the way, the answer without any shadow of a doubt is both. Like there, there, this is that it's like is light a particle or a wave? Physicists spend hundreds of years ask, um, arguing about that, <laughs> and then they go, "Oh, actually, it depends which state you observe it in." It's both, and and the the answer is you need you literally need both of those things. You're you're ruining the question for everyone now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, perfect. No, this was awesome. Next time you and I are talking, we're going to be looking at some key moments, some key decisions that you made. Do you think you're going to be ready for them? Uh, yeah, I mean, sure, but that's because I'm putting. This is. I mean, I can't tell you how low stakes this is for me. there's literally nothing on the line emotionally for me here because it would be a horrendous mistake for me to uh invest emotionally in my capacity otherwise to be good at this game because i'm just not that good at it perfect well let's jump into those right now